Okay, so welcome. Uh, hi, you guys. Welcome to my must do's learn what you must learn for you to enjoy cooking a little bit more. And it is really important to enjoy cooking because let's be real, this is something we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives. And there is no reason on earth why we can't enjoy enjoy a little bit. First of all, like I said, my name is Janelle, AKA Nellie Belly. I have been married for 24 years. I have a 23 and an 18 year old as of this week. I cannot believe that they're only four days apart. So hello birthdays all at one time. Um, I am the oldest of 10 children, which is where I have the nickname Nellie Belly. And I have been working in the food industry as a food blogger, as well as I develop recipes for large food corporations, companies, and I do their photography as well. And I've been doing that for 10 years. Uh, I believe very strongly that cooking should not have to be a solitary endeavor. I don't know why we do that to ourselves, but we certainly have created cooking as a solitary endeavor, haven't we? So before we start, I would just recommend be kind. Turn off your phone, close your tabs, get rid of distractions, but let's be real. Most of you are going to be watching TLC like I do when I'm working and I'm not offended. Uh, you might want to take notes, so grab a pen and paper or your iPad or whatever it is you're going to be using. And then tell me in the chat, how many times a week do you enjoy making meals? Do you enjoy it? It's a chore but it doesn't have to be awful. So how many times would you say one time a week, you're like, ah, this is pretty good. Or is it like, never? How often do you enjoy it? Do you feel like you rely on recipes for your best meals? When you make a meal that you love, is it because you pulled out a recipe? And why haven't you prioritized learning to enjoy cooking more? Why has not that been a priority? So many times I hear people say, I, I just don't like it. And they don't, have a solution. So I'd love to know why that has not been a priority. All right, you do, you cook, but you don't really enjoy cooking. Yeah, I hear that a lot. And it's like a chore for a lot of people. So does it sound like you? You want to be able to walk into your kitchen without wishing you were doing anything else. <laughs> I put this question up on our Facebook page and I was astonished at how many people told me they would rather be doing laundry or dishes than cooking or making a meal. And I was like, are you kidding me? So I wanna fix that. I'm sorry, but laundry and dishes should not come before cooking. <laughs> um, are you always on the hunt for better recipes, for tips and hacks for meals? Do you think that more cooking classes, recipes, or tools are the answer? The answer to that question should be no, because you should not think that those are gonna help you. They, you need foundational steps. You need the underlying kind of stuff. Do you wish you just knew how to fill in the blank? Do you wish you knew how to cook quicker meals? Do you wish you knew how to not make so many freaking dishes? What is it you wish you knew? So what we're going to learn today, wait, pause, we all need to get a glass of drink of wine. Mm. We're going to learn my guaranteed must do's to help you enjoy cooking just a little bit, maybe a lot bit, I hope a lot bit, but even a little bit more, just a little bit. And before we dig in, I'm going to share a little bit of my story with you quickly so you know how I got here, how I learned this stuff, why you should listen to me. Okay, this is me when I was a little baby. 24 years ago, I got married. I was a baby. I was 18 years old. This is me in my wedding dress, all the beautiful things. We got married right around Christmas. And I married into a family that was fairly traditional, conservative, and my husband was used to, you know, your typical meat and potato kind of meals. And so I kind of got thrust into this, you know, cooking as a young wife for my husband on a daily basis. And maybe you can relate with that. Maybe you maybe aren't in your present state right now, but at some point you were cooking for a young family. This is my, my children and my husband and I years and years ago. <laughs> and every single day when you have a young family, even when you don't have a young family, there are so many other things you need to be doing. You're working, you're doing laundry, you're doing the dishes, all the things that have to happen. On top of that, having a young family, my needs, for cooking changed on a daily basis. Like I said, I am the oldest of 10 children 
And my family went through a very, very chaotic time when I was a young wife. And my parents got a divorce. My dad left the family and we never talked to him again for decades. And my mom was raising 10 kids by herself pretty much. And so when I was young, a young wife, my siblings were at my house all the time. And so I would go from having myself and my two kids, my husband to having all of my siblings over. Add to that, we were also youth leaders and we would have sometimes up to 40 kids on a Friday night. And so I had to learn very quickly how to adapt my meals to serve a few all the way up to just in a lot of people. And then we lived about 25 miles from the local grocery store. So I couldn't just pop down to the grocery store and pick something up on top of which I didn't have the budget to do that. So I really, really, really struggled to learn how to cook and adapt the, the cooking for my family. I didn't have any cooking foundations to draw from. Uh, it really surprises people when they hear that I did come from that conservative background. Uh, but my mom did not have a cooking foundation. She wasn't a great cook. I grew up on processed meals, tuna, tuna melts, Kool-Aid. I mean, a lot of people grew up on Kool-Aid. And all of those kinds of boxed things, I didn't know how to cook a lot of foods. And I couldn't cook without recipes. And when you're trying to adapt meals, recipes that require specific ingredients to make specific servings are really hard to stretch and figure that out. So I was really frustrated. I did begin to learn little by little out of necessity, let's be real, uh, resources and strategies to turn the cooking into something I dreaded into something now I love. I love spending time in my kitchen. I'm good at it. I've created an entire career on it. This is me in my cute little shirt. I sold those shirts. You can buy those shirts, by the way. <laughs> um, this is just a couple years ago. And now I can make meals. Not only can I make meals without recipes, I now develop recipes. Uh, so it's been just this complete 180 turn from where I started to where I am today. I can walk into my kitchen now and I'm, you know, I don't feel dread. I don't feel stress. I am like, all right, we're going to do this thing. This is what's going to happen. And today I am really excited because I want to give you some of those steps, not all of them, but some of the steps that you can utilize for yourself. All right. So this is future you. This is, this is, I hope what you're going to be. This person has a, first of all, a glass of wine. She's my BFF because she, I don't know, it looks delicious. And she has learned foundational skills for her kitchen, for cooking. So she does not have to dread mealtime. What do you think that feels like for her? It feels calm. It feels confident. She does not feel stressed. She feels like she can give her kids and her family something special. Not special in the sense of meals and delicious food, but special in the sense that she can pass on to the next generation, not having to deal with stressful kitchen and cooking. Why does the kitchen have to be stressful? So where, where are we going to go from here? All right, this is the nitty gritty. Here we go. <laughs> Number one, must do. Stop, stop, stop looking for new and creative recipes. Okay, this is, this is one of my number one. Stop looking for delicious recipes and, and all the new things. Put your meals into a system that you can repeat again and again and again and again. Repetition, this is really, really, really powerful. Choose the meals that are easy for you to make and then add in something new when you have time learn some tips and some hacks to change up that, that meal, utilize prepared ingredients for the meal whenever you need to. I want to stress that we do not shame people for prepared ingredients. Uh, when you're just learning how to cook, when you don't have time, it is so much better to grab a prepared ingredient than to hit the fast food place. Use prepared ingredients as much as you need to. Um, then the other thing that's really cool is to become a master at a specific type of food. So I have a friend who makes sandwiches and she makes killer sandwiches. They're like super delicious. And she's always apologizing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm making a sandwiches again. And I'm like, stop apologizing. Like, let me go buy you a t-shirt that says you are the awesomest sandwich maker. Give it to you. You wear that thing and own that because being really good at something, at a specific kind of food is nothing to be ashamed of. And it's something to utilize. 
So I had a viewer question, she, she's had a hard time deciding what to fix for lunch and dinner is my challenge these days. Coming up on 10 months of fixing almost every meal at home and it's starting to feel repetitive. My creative juices are fried. And I bet you can hear, you hear that. I did put this question up on our Facebook page and um, was really, really a lot of great, great answers to this question. And here's some of my favorites. This person has a standard meal plan. Uh, they only have to be creative when they want to because they use meaty Monday, taco Tuesday, salads Wednesday, pasta Thursday, pizza Friday. They rarely eat those things on those days, but this way they never feel like they have to come up with a meal. Another person says I make large amounts and freeze for future use. Another person, I repeat meals all the time. There are foods we prefer, so that's what I make. Another person, I always keep soup on hand when I'm at a loss or no appetite. You can always add extras to a simple can of soup to make it special. And the one thing I will note here is that once again, we're talking about repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. And as we know, science has proven that repetition makes our brain not have to think too much because it just knows it by memory. So when we repeat the same meals, we give our brain room to be creative within those meals. So actually, the answer to more creativity is by um, repetition. Okay. One of my favorite hacks, not hacks, one of my favorite things to do is what I call a top 40. It, it is where I have taken every meal my family loves, this is my top 40 here, and I have written it all down in one list. And I just rotate through those meals. I might change it up a little bit occasionally, like there's a chicken salad and I might make a curry chicken salad, I might make it with um, shrimp instead of chicken, but it's the same meals repeated and you will never have the same meal in the same month twice. You, you just, it's never going to happen. So one of the things I always recommend to young mothers and frankly, everybody is make the, make the list of your favorite 40 meals and then just rotate through that as you feel like it. It helps you eliminate the need for creativity. You learn the foundational recipes. You learn all these recipes really well, and then you can adapt them and you can tweak them. And in reality, when you adapt venison chili into turkey chili with avocado, you have created a new recipe. The other thing is save one or two meals you pull out only, only when you're tired. When my kids were small, they loved chocolate chip pancakes. And so I would only make chocolate chip pancakes in the evenings when I was just fried, I was tired. Um, it was one of those recipes that I could feed lots of people for a lot less money. And so only when I was tired, and to this day, they adore it when I make chocolate chip pancakes. Uh, theming out your days, like that person said, meatless Monday, uh, pizza Friday, we do that. It means when it gets to Friday, I know that I'm gonna be making a pizza. There's lots of different pizzas I could be making, but I know that I don't have to think about it. I need dough, I need sauce, I need ingredients. That's the end of that. Um, another thing again, because Cooking does not have to be solitary. Neither does recipe planning, meal planning. Swap your top five recipes with your friends and have them swap with you. See what their favorite recipes are that they repeat again and again and again for the, their family. Why go and reinvent the wheel? Find what they're loving, make it for yourself as well. Uh, that goes also to, oops, meal planning, um, especially for young families. Share that duty with your friends. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just a simple meal plan with a grocery list. One person does it one time a month and then everybody gets the rest of the time off. Think about something like that. All right, so for today, I want you to plan two meals, only two meals, not recipes, meals that you can utilize only on the days you are exhausted and tell me what those meals are. So maybe those are gonna be sloppy joes, maybe those are gonna be um, roasted chicken, maybe it's gonna be, I don't know, chicken noodle soup from the can. What are the two things you know your family loves, super easy to make, that you can pull out only when you're exhausted so your family's excited? Um, and then make sure you always have the ingredients for those things on hand. And so then, you know, think about which meals can you utilize that are in reality uh, pantry ingredients that don't have a lot of fresh ingredients. That would be the ideal. That's why chocolate chip pancakes were so ideal for that. All right, number two, prioritize foundational cooking skills. This is important as well. 
it is really important to improve on foundational cooking skills. That means you need to stick with simple, simple, simple recipes. Stick with the basic recipes. Learn the re those recipes well. How those ingredients work together. What the flavor combinations are. Get really, really, really great at those specific and simple recipes like pastas and eggs and roasted meats and rices and the very, very simple things. The get on, and then the other thing here, it's really important that we really need to learn and we need to help our kids learn. It's removing the idea of failure in the kitchen. It doesn't exist. It, they are just ingredients and it is just like any other skill. We gotta practice it, we're gonna fail. It's not gonna turn out and that's okay. It's okay, it's totally okay. Um, again, being a good cook takes lots and lots of practice. You have to practice. And that means you just got to keep getting good at what you're good at. And what I mean by that is if you're really good at making pasta, keep making pasta and then just slowly change into it. Stick to the basics of what you're good at, what you know, build on it a little bit at a time. So maybe you're going to make a shrimp scampi and then the next day you're going to make a chicken alfredo and then you're going to make um, a peanut noodles. Just keep on learning those skills and learning those flavor profiles. And then again, I'm gonna keep stressing this, you have to ex expect that you're gonna screw up, laugh about it, go get yourself some fast food and move on. This is soup. Um, <laughs> so the thing that I learned early on in my marriage and uh, it was soups because soups are very, very easy to stretch. You can add lots of different ingredients, and I am now an absolute master at making soup. Um, I don't make it as much anymore because I've learned that through these skills, I've learned a lot of other recipes. But I made, gosh, in those first 10, 15 years, I made so many soups. Um, okay, find your personal cooking zone. Find the, 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 stay within the recipes that are in your budget, that are in your diet, that are in your skills. There are gonna be tons of things you can learn within that tiny little pocket. Don't feel the need to look around at what everyone else is doing and save every recipe because it looks nice. It can look nice, but it's gonna be for the next person. It might not be, you know, unless of course you, you, it's, it's an evening where you wanna grab yourself a glass of wine, turn on some music and, and have fun learning something new completely, that's totally cool. But on those busy days and on your normal everyday cooking, you need to stay within your little zone of genius and then start small. Again, slowly build those skills in your zone. Learn the profiles you guys love. Le learn how to cook the basics you keep making again and again. Learn the sauces you like. Learn the, I call this ingredient science, and that's why does this ingredient work in here? How long does that ingredient have to cook? And again, ignore what everyone else is doing, the recipes that are not in your zone. There is no shame in what your family likes to eat. All right, viewer problem. I need simple choices for, of meals for two. I, we hear ya. I'm almost in that zone too. The issue is not going out much and not having what's needed to cook, then wasting what food we have. Food waste is hard, especially I think with, with um, my husband and I, because we're, it's just us and our son, um, I still have a tendency of cooking for a lot of people. And so I, I do tend to have more food waste than I would like. Okay. So now I want you to write down an easy foolproof meal that you can make this week that is in your cooking zone. You know you can be good at it and you know it's in your budget and you know it's in your diet. And then let me know what that meal is gonna be. Bonus, share your favorite prepared ingredients that you use for shortcuts. I, of course, I think most people will say, will say this, I use pie crusts. Um, I also really love to use jarred sauces. I find they're fairly inexpensive for, you know, how much work it would be for me to make them. I also use a lot of, a lot of, um, dressings, like salad dressings for like marinades and things like that. Um, they're just super handy. All right, question. Do you know what double duty cooking is? And do you know what capsule pantry is? Ooh, -hoo. I know things you're going to learn. All right. Number three. Tackle what you hate about cooking. Do not ignore it. You need to make your kitchen work for you. Your kitchen isn't gonna be ideal. Nobody's kitchen's perfect. I don't care if you have a gourmet kitchen, it's not going to be perfect. Um, and a lot of people complain to me that they can't cook because their kitchen is awful. You can cook. You just have to make it work. 
Keep your favorite tools nearby, set up yourself up for fun, and remember that your kitchen is a work zone. You have to treat it like it's got a job to do. You have to plan around those shortcomings. What is difficult to do in your kitchen? In your kitchen, Is it difficult to do dishes because you don't have a dishwasher? Does your stove go, cr go cranky whenever you turn it over up over 350 degrees? Does your water take forever to run hot? What is, what is difficult to do in your kitchen? And then are there any hacks or resources that you could utilize that would help with those problems? There's gonna be a lot of stuff out there because you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, most people have the same problem you have. Um, not everybody, there's definitely gonna be something there you have that other people don't have. But for most, most people have this, a similar problem. So there's gonna be something out there to help. And then when you figure out something that works, Figure out how to repeat it, do it again. If your oven doesn't work well and you figured out how to, um, to roast your chicken on the stove top, figure out another recipe that is similar and, and just keep on winning that. Pizza, yes to pizza. Yeah, my family loves pizza and so we, um, I try to do home, homemade pizza, but most of the time I don't like to make the crust. And so I will have purchased crust I have purchase crust, I have pie uh, pizza crust mix, and then sometimes I'll make it. So depending on what kind of a mood I'm in. <laughs> All right, then change your systems, tools, and your surroundings. Find the shortcuts. I had to show you guys this. I, I don't know if you guys have seen this. I don't have a lot of funny little tools. I'm a person that's very, very basic. I like my kitchen to be very neat and, and tidy. But <clears throat> I have this, have you guys seen this before? It goes um, like this. These are for these Ziploc bags. Now you can load your, your stuff in. Again, because I made so much soup, you can load, can you guys see me? Hang on, there. You can load your, um, your soup in by yourself now, like this. I don't know if you've seen these before. Anyway, that is one of the tips and tools. When I was making soup back in the day, I always had to have someone hold the bag so I could pour it into um, Ziplocs to freeze. Of course, nobody wanted to do it because they would, they would hurt their hands. Um, and so I, found a solution. Anyways, there are solutions out there for most people. All right, let's see if I can go back to this. If I know how to do this. Tech, 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 tech. There we go. Um, and then, uh, then the other thing is tell you, remind yourself that without the right tools and resources, you will be reaching for a fast food. Um, if I don't keep ingredients in my home that make it easy and fast for me to cook, I will go out to eat. And I know that about myself. I am a food blogger. I create recipes all the time, but I still don't want to have to make food when I'm tired. And so if I don't have things on hand to make it fast and easy for myself, um, I am going to go out. And it is a waste of money, waste of time, bad for my health. And so anything that I can do to find ways to make that fa faster for me um, is totally worth the, the, the time. Okay, and then of course, when we get to talking about recipes, Oh my goodness, there is a never ending supply of recipes. I know that just on my site alone, just my site, I have over 800 recipes, just me. So if you think about how much is out there, there's no reason why you cannot find a good chunk of recipes within the zone that you need them to be in. Um, for some people, 30 minute meals. There's gonna be so many 30 minute meals, nothing wrong with having only 30 minute meals, one pot recipes if you hate dishes, sheet pan recipes, five ingredient recipes, frozen ingredients. I did that a lot when back in the day because I did not have easy storage of fresh produce. It was so far away, it didn't store well. Freezer meals, uh, HelloFresh. There's nothing wrong with using HelloFresh if that's what you need to do, go for it. And then one of the things I think is always overlooked because we do look at it as a chore, we don't always stop and realize we can kind of control the way we feel. And so one of the things I do, I always pour myself a glass of wine. Um, if you have children, I, my kids are grown now, but I used to put them in front of the TV with a movie. And they love that because it's like the only time they could watch movies was when I was cooking. Uh, I listened to my favorite true crime podcast or have a reality TV show going on in the background. Um, a lot of people I know listen to audiobooks. Whatever it is that you can do to make that cooking time special and to make it be 
uh, something that you look forward to, particularly if it's when you get, you treat yourself to something that would be, those are, those are great things to do to help you enjoy it. And then, um, again, making small effective changes to your environment. A lot of people get really frustrated with their cupboards. They're a disaster. Organize them one at a time. Don't go all in. Just organize one. Um, update your, your, your surfaces, your dishes. If the, your dishes don't go in the dishwasher, get, new, get ones that do go in the dishwasher. Hit your thrift store for those. Um, make sure you're decluttering on a regular basis. It is really obnoxious and frustrating to go into a kitchen to try to cook and spend most of your time just looking for the things you need. Um, and then add the small things that are just for you. Um, if you're going to go buy a tea kettle, buy the unicorn tea kettle or the floral tea kettle, whatever it is you love. Don't apologize. Uh, you don't have to buy it for anyone else, especially now that we have so many more people staying home and not going out and not having people in. Um, you got to do what you love. All right, this reader's problem is their biggest struggle is washing the pots and pans that were used from cooking. Amen. <laughs> we'll, and again, we'll be discussing that later on here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned from the very beginning, I am sorry if I didn't, that I will be talking about my, my new course at the very end of this. And I want to make sure I mention that right away so no one feels tripped. Um, I should have done that much earlier. And I am really sorry that I didn't do that earlier. Uh, but I will be talking about that at the very, very end. So leave now if you want to. And I'm not offended if you do. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I'm clear. Um, okay, so biggest pet peeve about cooking, your kitchen, mealtime. I think a lot of people's biggest pet, pet peeves would be dishes, for sure. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I think I get frustrated when people are in my space. And I wanna, I wanna just be able to like think and cook and not have to have people talking at me. Um, that's a frustration for me. So anyways, share your biggest pet peeve about cooking, about your kitchen perhaps, about any of that kind of stuff. All right, so just reminder, today you learn to embrace and practice repetitive, repetitiveness. Keep things on repeat. Repeat, 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 and just switch it up a little bit, adapt it, change it up a little bit. You, I guarantee you, your family doesn't care if they keep getting the same recipe again. If they love that recipe and they get it once a month, they're gonna be thankful. I guarantee you, I don't know how many mothers tell me that they made their family a new recipe that took so long and they all they wish they had done was just make mac and cheese. Uh, so go ahead and don't feel that you have to do anything fancy. Uh, you also learned that your current kitchen can work for you. The kitchen you have is the best kitchen you have, period. Learn how to make it work for you. Learn to make it cook. And, and you know what? If you ever move, and I've moved multiple times in the last six years, every single kitchen is a little bit different. And so you really do have to learn how to just use what you got. Uh, you, you need more foundational skills in your own cooking zone. Those foundational skills, if you make a lot of rice, you need to really, really know how to make good, good rice. Or like I do, I buy it already made. So you really just need to learn the, the skills, your foundational skills. Okay, so here's the part where I'm gonna actually talk about the course coming up. If you're not interested in this at all, this is the time to leave. But you're here today because you want yummy food without all the stress, without the guilt, without all the you should be making this, you should be doing this, you should be blah, blah, blah. You don't wanna to have to have that. You wanna feel calm and organized and ready to do things when you get in your kitchen. And you have felt like if you could just find the right recipe, the right, the right ingredients, or learn another cooking skill, that like it would be better. I'm going to tell you right now, it's your time. It is your time to experience looking forward to the time in your kitchen. This is a thing that can actually happen. So learn lifetime skills and research lifetime. Keyword, lifetime. You are always going to have to cook lifetime skills and resources to have a happy kitchen and ultimately a happy cook, which is you. It is your time to learn to love cooking with a step-by-step -step survival guide. <laughs> I had to think about whether, what I was gonna call it and I was like, is that too strong of a word? Is survival too strong of a word? And I think for some of you guys, it's not strong enough. <laughs> so we're going with survival. And a reminder that nothing I shared with you today 
is theory or ideas. These are all things that me and my readers have done to learn to love cooking. Repetitiveness, done that for the last 20 some years. Repetitiveness has been absolutely fundamental in helping me learn cooking. I don't have any advantages or special skills. I don't have any secret tools or access to expensive resources. I just have a foundation that works. And if I can learn to do this, if I went from me at 18 to who I am now, you can do it too, I promise you. Okay, introducing you guys. I had to take a picture, this is me this, me this morning. I was getting ready for today and I was so excited and I had to be like, oh, you guys, I'm so excited. Uh, introducing, this is my brand new course, The Everyday Cook, Finding Joy in the Tour of Cooking. Oh my gosh, I have built a course that was what I wish I had had when I was 18 years old. It is a mis match up of all of my own personal experience with the frustration of learning to cook and all that with now all of my experience within the food industry and my millions and millions of interactions with our viewers and our fans and all of our, our people from our food blog, all of that combined, what you're gonna get, I know. I'm not going to read all this. It's a lot. There's a lot, you guys. Six, six jam-packed full modules are going to be dripped out over six months, so you do not have to be completely overwhelmed. It's easy to consume, bite-sized. I'm including three bonuses I'm going to show you. Foundational skills. Two of those modules are dedicated just to the basics of learning flavor profiles, learning about spices, learning basic skills, understanding ingredients and how they work together. And some of that food science-y stuff that you need to have so that you can open your cupboard and cook with whatever's inside of that cupboard. And we're gonna learn that in bite-sized, non-overwhelming ways like I would have liked to have had. Meal plans and resources so that you can just get cooking. You don't have to wait around um, because meal plan subscriptions are expensive. So I'm gonna show you how to create meal plans that you can, that you can make fast, easy. Um, we're gonna talk about grocery shopping. I grocery shop in my home, I don't leave. Uh, we, I wanna get you in and out of that stuff faster. Recipes and checklists. Again, I have hundreds and hundreds of recipes to share with you. Tool checklists, apps and resources, conversion tools. Um, everything organized, one place, easy for you to find so you don't have to feel overwhelmed. And of course, tons and tons and tons of video tutorials, audio tutorials. Um, I wanna make sure that you can learn how to cook and the foundations you need in whatever version of learning that works best for you. And of course, don't miss bonus number two, which is the group cooking classes. Those are like super fun. Everyone loves those. Live group Q&A calls. We're gonna get together and talk cooking fails, cooking wins, get your questions answered, share new resources and tips like our little baggy thing um, that other people might have found. Again, cooking should never ever have to be a solitary endeavor. We wanna build a community to help each other. And then of course, we're gonna take some of our Nelly Belly recipe challenge, put it in here. We're gonna have weekly themes, games, fun, prizes, all the things that we can think of to help you stay motivated and uh, learning little bit by little bit. So basically this is the program I wish that I had created for myself years and years and years and years ago. Um, so by the end of this course, I know, I know, I know, I know that you're gonna have your kitchen ready for success. You're gonna have it set up so that you can cook without recipes. You're gonna have foundational skills. You're gonna be confident in the kitchen. You're gonna have stress less. And you are gonna have a full back pocket arsenal of recipes and skills and resources personalized just for you. So some examples real quick, you guys. Module one is gonna be about setting up for success. It's gonna be about your space, your kitchen space, your pantry ingredients. Um, kitchen zones, what you need in your cooking station, what a cooking station even is, uh, must have tools, lots and lots more there. Module two is gonna be all about prepping and planning, different ways to meal plan, like the postcard method. So this is a friend of mine, well, this isn't her, but she uses a postcard method, and she has written down all her top 40 re uh, recipes or meals on little postcards, post-its, put that on her fridge, and then she just moves it over the one that she wants to make that week. And it's just a really clever uh, way of meal planning. 
Um, we're going to learn tips and tricks and hacks. We're going to learn some must know skills, the tools, the resources, choosing your ingredients. What are the different kinds of ingredients? How can you swap them out? How should you store them? How can you prep them? Can you prep them in advance? A lot of those kinds of basic things. And then module three, and again, module six, will all be about foundational cooking. Again, we're gonna learn flavor profiles, how to make sauces and dressings, spices, all that like very fundamental cooking stuff that, doesn't, that you need to have before you even really start recipes. What is a roux? <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of stuff. Uh, module four, we'll be talk talking about your pet peeves, how you can reduce your dishes, how you can cook with your kids and your spouses around, staying within a budget, some, some tips and things for staying within budget. Food waste. This one's a sore spot for me, so I actually need this one. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna work through eliminating food waste. So again, this is all the things you get, Q&A calls, group live coaching classes. All right, bonus. So excited about this bonus, you guys. All right, this is a bonus module. If you've never heard of this before, let me clue you in. So this is called the capsule grocery bag. If you've never heard of a capsule wardrobe, look that up. Uh, I use a capsule wardrobe. The idea is there are only 10 ingredients in that grocery bag. You go to the grocery store, you only buy 10 ingredients. And from those 10 ingredients, you can make all kinds of dishes. And so what we're gonna do, or I'm gonna do, is I'm going to give you all of these recipes based on these 10 ingredients, and they're simple recipes, they're not gonna be anything fancy, uh, so just so we get an idea of how food and ingredients work together. Um, and then of course we always have, we're gonna have the group foundational cooking classes. These are once a month group live cooking classes where we're gonna learn some very, very important foundational skill based on the module we're working in. And to, just for the next 72 hours, we have a fast action bonus. 20 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me to brainstorm what your unique struggles are with kitchen and mealtime because your struggles are going to be different than my struggles, different than the next person's struggles. And there's no like blanket band-aid that we're going to be able to use. So we're going to, you're going to have 20 minutes of time with me to just kind of talk it through and see if we can find you any really quick wins. I'm calling myself the kitchen personal trainer <laughs> or the personal kitchen trainer. I'm not sure. Basically, I'm that person that's going to like kick your booty into shape. All right. So are you ready to love cooking? All right. Main question. I know. What's the investment? How much is it going to cost? So first, let me just tell, just tell you this. I was trying to figure out how to, what to charge. And I really want to make this really, really accessible for people. And I was figuring this out. If you were to try to figure this out on your own, like if you were trying to find all the information that we're putting together into this course and get the videos and the menu plans and, the, and all of the information and put it all in, it, it would be almost impossible. You'd be Googling forever. You'd have to sift through all the things. And that would be before you even started cooking. Uh, so the advantage here is that I've taken all of my years of personal frustration and all the things that I've heard from our millions of viewers and readers of their frustrations are, all of the things that I've learned within working within the food industry and put it together into one spot for you guys. So my experience is a huge, humongous advantage. If you were to hire me as a coach, I didn't really know, like I make a lot of money. <laughs> so let's just say it was $125 an hour. And just, just in the live time with me, this doesn't even include the menus, the checklist, the games, the community, nothing. Um, you're getting six group live cooking classes. You're getting 60 foundational cooking lessons, all video. These are video, you guys. 12 live Q&A videos. All of that is already at $4,500. Like, I don't know what I'm even thinking. If you were to take, I had to laugh at this one because my son and I were talking about this just today. He's getting ready for college. If you were to take a college course to learn these things, first of all, you wouldn't be able to. They don't teach you things like grocery shopping and menu planning and setting up your kitchen. Uh, it's very like culinary based, but let's just say you did. It would cost you thousands of dollars to learn this stuff. And of course, you wouldn't be able to have a job because you know, you got to go to college. So you have to factor that in. <laughs> so it would be a lot of money. Um, so the whole point of that whole spew is just to say that this program, I believe, is priceless. I know how long you're going to have to cook, how long this stress of cooking is going to last forever. You're going to have it for the rest of your life.
And so being able to gain a little bit more confidence and a little bit more joy is utterly 100% priceless. There's no, there, you can't measure that. All right, so normally this is the price that you would get. You would have $39 today with 11 more payments of $39. That'd be 12 payments of $39. But to the next 72 hours, we're gonna do special pre-sale pricing. Save $150 when you join us just for the pre-sale or 12 monthly payments of $24 a month. Just, just to clear, just to like, $24 is a cup of coffee a week. <laughs> I mean, if you gave up a cup of coffee a week and I told you, if you give me that coffee, I will make you love being in your kitchen. Would you do it? You probably would. All right, but I wanna be very, very clear. The pre-sale, how the pre-sale works is if you purchase it now, you'll save that $150, but you don't get your access to that first module until Monday, February 15th. It does not happen immediately today. That's why you're saving the $150. Um, okay, button for enrollment. Let me get you the button for enrollment. I'm gonna drop it in to the chat because you guys need this. First of all, it's on the live page. If you're on the live page, then you will find it right there. And I'm going to drop in the button for the full price. However, I do have a button. I do have the ability to, again, do monthly subscriptions. Um, so you can get $24, $24 once a month for the rest of the year. You will have nine months of, of um, yeah. I cannot do two things at one time. Like you'd think I'd be able to do two things at one time and I can't. Anybody else feel me right now? <laughs> okay, anyways, $24 a month uh, for 12 months. Uh, this, this class lasts for nine months, but we will be dripping out additional things after that. So you basically, I mean, $24 a month, like seriously, it's just, I don't know. And the reason we gave it, I gave it that price. I had a really hard time. You guys, I really had a hard time choosing a price point for this because I know that if you hate cooking, you don't like cooking. The last thing you want to do is spend money on cooking. Like you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on cooking when you already don't like it. So it was really a struggle for me because I want to make sure that pe the people like you guys that, that don't like cooking that need this get access to it. <laughs> but at the same time, like I have to make it worth my while and make sure that I am, you know, at least able to pay my bills. So it was a real str struggle on, on what to, um, what to charge. And so, you know, if you feel like it's way too expensive, then I would love you to tell me that. I'd love to hear what you think about the price point. All right, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen if I can remember how to do this. There's, I put the link in there, you guys. All right. I hope we're in the right place. Let's share, there we go. All right, so I put the button in. I want you to enroll. If you want that subscription option, then go. Then I'll put that link in here as well. Um, so you can do that $24 a month if that's easier for you. Again, $24 a month. I mean, Netflix is already like, what, 17? So this is just, it's just a no-brainer. I hope anyways, I hope it's a no-brainer. Uh, reminder that this is pre-sale. You don't get access until February 15th. Reminder, you will get an email from me as quickly as I possibly can that says, Hey, I see you're here. Welcome. But you won't get access until the 15th. Um, this is what the, the, the checkout looks like. Super secure. I'm using PayPal and credit card. You guys do not have to worry about it. Super secure um, for you. Again, $24 today. And then once a month for 11 more payments. And, or if you pay in full, you'll save $41. That's the link I put in there. And these again, all the things you get, I just think it's, I just, I cannot stress to you guys how excited I am about this program and how many people I want to get into this. I think it's going to just be so valuable. All right. So I know you might have some questions. One of the questions that I've heard already is are they seriously, seriously, no skills. And frankly, don't know if they really want to learn to cook. Sometimes I hear this with people who have a, a spouse that cooks and they don't, why should they bother? Things like that. Um, and I'm going to just, frankly, 
I'm gonna say, again, I keep saying this, you're cooking for your lifetime. You don't know what's gonna happen in your life. At what point do you not invest in learning to enjoy cooking? It's gonna be there forever. Why not try to, to enjoy it? I already like cooking. Why should I do this? Is this for me? Oh, girlfriend, yes. Yes, you are actually the person that's gonna love this the most. I guarantee that you're gonna find huge value in the community, part of it, the themes, the challenges, and the cooking classes. Um, we have done ba uh, baking challenges year after year after year, and we have huge response to them. So I know, without a shadow of a doubt, that the community-based part of this is going to be 100% worth the money. You are going to love it. And I'm going to guarantee you that you're going to go through the whole thing and you're going to buy it again, just because you want to be there for the community part of it. Again, pre-sale, $150 off, begins on February 15th, or you can pay 12 monthly payments of $24. Uh, fast, fast action bonus does end in 72 hours. That coaching call will not be available in 72 hours. You don't get access to me personally off, and there are only so many of those available. There's only so much I need to go around, you guys. <laughs> All right, this is when we are gonna do some Q&A, and I think, let's see if I can stop my screen share. If anyone has any questions about the program, you guys, I would be so excited because I am beyond excited about offering this program. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, so the modules are, so how many modules are there and how often are they delivered? So there are six, there could be a few more. There always, there's, I always give myself opportunity to add more things if I feel like you need to learn more. As it stands right now, there are six modules and there are many, many lessons within the modules. The modules are developed for a month so that you can get little bits at a time and not like, all this material to, to, to consume. Also because the last six months, again, we want to just take it slow. This isn't, you know, you have a whole lifetime of cooking ahead of you. So we want to just slowly develop some habits and get you going slowly. Big community factor here. So we really just to turn that mindset into something you enjoy. It takes some time. Um, and Overwhelm is a major problem with, with learning to cook. There's just so many things to learn, so many recipes, so many things you can turn to, it's distracting. And so we, I really wanna reduce that overwhelm and, and just make it very action, bite-size oriented. Foundational cooking. Okay, so is that gonna be cooking classes? Yes, so not all. When it comes to the foundational cooking pieces of this, this is very, very personalized class. As much as I can, we're gonna personalize a lot of the things that need to be happening. And those foundational cooking classes are gonna constantly be building and building, building. They're gonna be more and more. Because if there's a few people in the class that are asking for um, how to boil eggs, and I don't have that particular uh, skill, I'm gonna create that and put that in. So as it stands right now, well, there'll be 60, there are 60. And there's things like how to cook rice, um, how to boil a great pot of pasta, uh, foolproof mashed potatoes, um, a white garlic white sauce, uh, things like that. But like I said, we will add more as you need it personally and it is applicable. Um, what oh, do I have, what happens if you don't like it? Well, first of all, you're, you're gonna like it. <laughs> um, uh, you do have a 30 day money back guarantee. I don't have this on here. I will give you 30 days to, to say I don't want it after the fifth, after February 15th. Um, because that's the first module. If you go through the first module and you decide that this is not for you, you don't like me, you don't like my style, you don't like the fact that I'd like to drink wine when I'm teaching. Totally cool. I understand. That's cool. Um, reach on your money, cancel your subscription. No, no harm done. Um, I will say that after that, I mean, we'll have to have a conversation uh, and see where we go from there. So 30 days for sure. And then anything after that, but just, it's not even be a problem. We don't even have to discuss this. <laughs> um, what about if you have a large family? Well, not exactly sure what you mean by that, but if you have a large family, um, 
I think this is just goes along the lines of personalization and individualization. You know, we're going to do everything we can to to give you personal help to one on one give email and answer questions. That's what the Q and A is are for th things like that. Uh, I grew up the oldest of 10 children. I have a lot of experience with large families and cooking for lots of people. I mean, I mentioned that in the webinar. And I, and so I, I, I understand those unique circumstances. But again, we have the whole purpose of this, this course is to really understand that your the way that you cook and what you need to, to do within your family is very unique to you and not to the next person. And so I really want to help you develop skills that work for you. So your menu planning is for your specific uh, schedule and your specific circumstances and your recipes are developed around what you can eat. Um, again, I don't think this should be a solitary thing, which is why this course is in existence um, and why we're going to be building community around it. Because I do think there's elements where we can share the work together. We can talk about it. We can have fun. But we are absolutely going to be trying our best. I'm going to be trying my best to help you guys exactly where you are to um, make it so that you feel like you're heard. Um, and so that I can, as best as I can, can convey to you that you really, really have to just do what works for you and stop looking around. So I hope that, that helped. Um, credit card, yes, and PayPal. Yeah. Uh, okay, after this, 247 is going up to 397, I think. I, I'm not sure. I have to look that up. Okay. Um, uh, are, is this is this a something you're older and you don't have any children at home? Well, I think if you're asking me the the question of if this is applicable to you, then yes, one hundred percent. If you think, hmm, I think I'd like to take this this course because I don't really like to cook. Yes, 100% applicable. Just like the, the woman who had a large family and was concerned about it fitting with her, we will fit it with you. It, it is not about, again, this isn't about particular recipes, particular uh, menu planning. This is about foundations that work for you and for universally across the board. So there are universal foundations when it comes to cooking. And then we have to kind of add in our own our own layers that are very personal to us. And so what we want to do is we want to give you these, these, foundation, these foundations that you can go in and add in as you personally need to add in and you will, like you feel confident that you're, <laughs> that you're not going to fall, you're not going to sink. <laughs> Look at that little analogy there. Um, oh my. Um, what's the next question? Hang on. I got to go see. Gluten-free. Yeah. I mean, like, again, like everything else, I'm gluten-free, by the way. Uh, like everything else, gluten-free is just simply a circumstance that you have to learn to understand is your unique circumstance. So when you go to learn, uh, when you go to learn a skill, you're, you are going to want to skip the skills that are based on pasta. Um, but maybe this is where you reach out and say, hey, can we do something on gluten-free pasta? Again, I mean, I'm gluten-free and I recognize that gluten-free pasta is a little bit different than traditional pasta. We can certainly do a module on gluten-free pasta. Um, we do have one on uh, mashed cauliflower if for people who like that. Um, we have some gluten-free, quite a few gluten-free recipes. I'm also dairy-free. I know, right? Um, so absolutely 100% if you are gluten-free, if you're dairy-free, if you have an allergy, if there's large family, if there's big budget problems, if you don't like meat, if you're vegan, any of those things are just your extra personal layers. They're not foundational. Foundational is still going to be how do things interact? What are the flavor profiles? How do you set up your kitchen? Uh, how do you prepare ingredients? How do you store things? Um, how do you swap out ingredients? And this is obviously with gluten-free and dairy-free, great, great skill to have is how do you swap ingredients? Um, you have to understand what the ingredients are doing in the recipe so that you understand how to swap it. So there, I mean, I think that answers the question. You need this. This is like fundamental for you to understand how to cook. Um, I, like I said, I'm gluten-free and dairy-free. My family is not, and I cook on a regular basis food for all of us. I don't cook for myself and for them because I have learned how to swap in and out ingredients that work for me that they also like. 
so, you know, you'll, you'll, that's something that you'll learn how to do for sure. Okay. This is going to be the last question because we're coming up at nine o'clock and I wanted to stay at an hour. Um, price point. You wish that, do I have any discounts? <laughs> no. <laughs> like I said, uh, we are offering so much value in this course as it is. Uh, I, I'm under underpricing it already for the amount of time and energy and work that's going into it because I really, really feel strongly that this kind of information and this course is, is what's needed. Like it's just, I have a lot of friends that struggle with this. They, they don't like to cook and I hear it and I understand why they don't like to cook. And I just wish I could say, this is why this is what you need to do. This is how you like, this is how you overcome it. Uh, so I hope you guys, if you're watching friends, you need this course. Uh, and, and I, like I said, I wish I had had this course when I was first starting. I mean, I like now I would still buy it if I, if I knew someone else that had a course like this, because it's just, again, like, Anytime you can help someone even one more time a week, one more time a month, not be so stressed out at whatever it is. Uh, in this case, I have the skill at cooking, but whatever it is, then it just, it's, it's, it's just invaluable because, you know, we don't need more stresses or stressors in our life. And especially because I feel so strongly that cooking is such a community builder. So I want more people cooking. I want them enjoying it. I want them to have fun with it. So this is something I'm so excited to offer. And um, I want the price point to be as low as possible, but I also still have to be able to pay my bills, pay my staff. And so that's the best I can do. So like I said, though, 72 hours and the price is going up $150. So if you want it and you're worried about the price, you need to do it now. <laughs> this is the time. And again, $24 a month is the uh, subscription rate. $24 a month, you guys. I mean, like, that's just, it's so, I can save you that much money just in teaching you how to shop for groceries and, and, and having less food waste. Just in one lesson, in one module. And there's like a bajillion other things you're going to get out of it. Um, what, you, what if you learn how to cook one more dish that meant you didn't have to go, you didn't go out to eat? You're done. Done. You already saved yourself the money. So um, it is just totally worth the money. And uh, I can't, yeah. All right, you guys, I thank you so much for being here. And I hope, hope, hope to see you within the, in the course and see that you are joining us. Have a great evening. Um, happy winter, <laughs> whatever. Bye guys.